what you'll need for this is a sharp knife, a pair of sharp scissors, a soldering iron, some JB Weld 5-minute epoxy. Uh, you want the epoxy that's liquid, you don't want any sort of like paste or putty. Uh, the high-use plugs from Ocean Technology Systems, you've got your, or you'll need your uh, multimeter and some helping hands, a wire stripper, some solder, and it's not required, but it is definitely helpful, a pair of pipe cutters. So why wouldn't we need to replace these high use ends? Some of the problems you can have are not connecting all the way. So if we have two high use plugs, right, they, they don't quite make it. You'll usually get a gap about that size uh, from corrosion, from bent plugs, from all kinds of different things. You'll, you may also have problematic corrosion, so some of the pins here, uh, you may see pitting or discoloration. You may see that one pin is smaller than the other. There's all kinds of different issues that can arise with corrosion. That also stems from the inside pins corroding, making it too small, which is why, the, why sometimes the high-use plugs will not connect all the way. You may have damage on the line itself. so. You may have cuts, abrasion, anything like that, that that could happen in a line, in which case you would need to cut above that section a few inches. You may also need to cut this off if you're changing plug types. So if you're going from a Marsh Marine connection to a high use plug or anything else like that, you will need to cut this off and replace it. It is epoxied in place. You cannot take it apart and reuse it you have to cut it off and start over. What I have here is a section that has already been cut off. Um, if you do need to cut it off with a pair of pipe cutters, you should go up to the point where you don't see any corrosion in the line. How do you know if there's corrosion inside the line? Most of the time, you can cut it a few inches, maybe you know two to four inches above the high-use connection, and it will be fine. If, like uh, in my personal situation, we get a lot of corrosion up the lines. Not so much on the high use side, usually the banana plug side, but you can check inside where the wires are at, which I'll show you in a, in a minute when we take when we cut it up. Uh, if there's any sort of white powder in there between the, the wires, that's how you know that corrosion has spread up the line. You can also get discoloration in the wires themselves, uh, which is not typical, but it does happen from time to time. If you do find corrosion in here, then you need to move it up another six inches or 12 inches or however far until you no longer see corrosion. What we'll do now is we will remove the outer layer. So when we go to put on a high use plug, we have this cover, the sheath that goes over top of it. So you look at where that's at, right where that lines up, that far of a distance in between. But you also don't want the wires to be the first thing that goes into the epoxy. You want some of this sheath protective layer to go inside. So you need to move it over something like that. So if you line it up, that from the edge of here to the beginning of the high use plug, that is how much wire you will need. You do not need very much. It is best to cut it slightly over. I usually cut it about an inch or an inch and a half over and then I can trim those wires down to size. Tie it down, secure it any way you can. You can use uh, rope, tape, a vise, or an intern. Any of those things will work. After it's tied down and secured, we can then go ahead and start the process. So, so you wanna go about an inch or so uh, above the line, above where you actually want it to connect. A little bit over, just to make sure that we've got it. If you use a sharp knife, you can Twist it and cut it. So we've got it cut through. There is a sheath in there, so I wouldn't push really hard, but you can push a pretty good amount and still have, and still not cut any of the lines. So there's a little section there. I don't even need to slice. I can just push down and it will cut right through it. In there, that way I don't risk cutting into the wires. So I've got it taken off all the way around. So take my knife and I just a pretty good amount of force. 
push down and cut lengthwise on it, and that will allow me to pull it straight off. So now we have a protective sheath around the actual wires and everything. So if you take this, so if you take this and you kind of peel it back and get it to the base there, take a pair of sharp scissors and pull it tight and you can start cutting through all of these. So it doesn't have to look super pretty, it's just got to be pretty enough. Right? You have this plastic layer that goes around the bundle here. You just pull it off. Alright, so now we are left with the wires and we've got some fibers here, some support members. So there's these clear plastic. Um, ones. They're a lot thicker than the rest of them. We have all of these little fibers here. We can go ahead and cut through those. So separate them. Cut through these one by one. Just do not cut the blue ones. And then we are left with two wires that are wrapped in foil. So the next step will be removing the foil that protects the wires. We'll then cut them, cut them to size, strip the wires, and then we can start soldering. So in order to get the foil off, sometimes if you cut it just right, you can take the wires and spin them counterclockwise. And so you get these little the, the flaps that are, that are coming up here. You take your knife and just gently press into them. You can get a little line. You'll cut a little line into them, and it'll peel right off. You might need to use your scissors just to get it the rest of the way. So you can twist these. This one already had a little crease in it. It came off pretty easy. So what we're left with is four wires and these two metal wires. We don't need these, so we can cut these off. So, if we want to size these up, we go to our okay. So we got these lined up, right? And So I want there to be a little bit of overlap between the comm lines, the outer sheath, and the cover there. So I need to cut them right about, so I'm show you. Right. I cut them right about there because when we go to solder these, the ends of the lines where they're stripped will fit into, will actually fit into the little ends. So we need to strip these wires. They don't need to be very far. That's plenty. It's like 
about a quarter of an inch. Yeah, that's almost, a, that's exactly a quarter inch. So I'm gonna strip all these to the same length. Okay, so how do we know which wire goes where? So you can look at these sheets that OTS gives out. They are very detailed. The one thing that they don't cover is what color wire goes where. Because when you look at these wires, there's nothing about them that says mic or mic ground or any of those. So it can get pretty confusing. So I would always double check to make sure that your wires match up correctly to the plug end. Because there's a diver side and there's an umbilical side you need to know which one goes where. So the best way to make sure is to take a multimeter, and do a continuity test. You take one end and put it in any plug. And then go around. You wanna make sure that there's some sideways push on this because if you just push it straight in, it won't connect with anything. So you push it in and move it sideways here. So a little bit of tension like this can do that. You go around, you just touch each wire until you figure out which one is which. All right, so I got this pin is white. So that is the bottom female pin. So the way that I like to do it I draw two pins, two circles. So I'm looking at it from this direction. Okay, so that's the plug. I know it doesn't look great. I'm not the best at drawing, but it'll be like this. So when you're looking at it, you got the two pins up here, two pins up here, and you have the two female ends down there. So we already looked at this one, right? So it's that one. We know that that one is white. So we can move on to the next female one. There we go. So we got the red one. So we've got one right there. Go through. And find out that one is black. So look back at this. You know that one's white, that one's red, this one is black which means the only one left is green. I don't trust myself with an upside down G. All right. And we can test it just to make sure it's true because you do, not, you do not want to go through all of this work, get to the end when you've already soldered it and epoxied it and realize that you have just soldered the wrong wires together because you've, you've wasted over $100 and all of your time. I have done that, do not do that. So that one should be green, and it is. Okay, so now I know exactly which pins are supposed to line up to what. Okay, so when you look at this, right, you got four here. So we know, so we can look at this here. So look at it like this. So we've got the two plugs up top are here. So we've got black, which is that one. We've got green, which is this one. We've got white, which is the female end right under there. We've got red, which is right under there. So we know the orientation. So now we know where we need to solder the wires on the back side. So don't do what I almost just did every single time. Make sure you remember to put this sleeve on. If you put it on after you've already soldered them, guess what? You have to unsolder them. This plug just slides on. Let the flat part facing the plug, the heist plug, and you can just slide that down. Then I've just put some duct tape on this alligator clip. That way, it does not scar up or mar the the male plugs. I'm gonna line these up. It's 
You don't want to spend a lot of time heating this up because these pins connect all the way through to the other side and it will heat up the inside of the, and, and melt the inside of the rubber. If we continue to follow our little schematic here, little diagram. Uh, we've got the black and green already soldered in, black and green. So now we do the red and white. So we know the red is below black, so red will go on this side, and white is below green, so we'll go on that side. So these wires are gonna cross, and then we will solder them in place. I'm just gonna use this to get it right there, so we're gonna hold it down at this solder. Now, we slide this cover up, fit right on there. We'll have a little bit of the line, the comb line that's inside of here, so it still gets support from the outside in the casing. The next thing we're gonna do is fill it with epoxy. Okay, so I'll cut a cup at a slight angle, very rough, but I will put some epoxy in here we can mix it up, and then I'll be able to pour this directly in here. It almost looks like candy. You just want to keep mixing it up until it starts to turn uniform color. There's definitely a lot of bubbles in that, but for what we're doing, the bubbles will be fine. So you want to fill the epoxy all the way up to the top there. If you have a stronger line, like that of uh, umbilicals for surface applied diving, these have a strength member in them and can be very hard to cut. Uh, I would recommend a pipe cutter. If you place the pipe cutter right on here. Run it around the edge. Tighten it a little bit more. A little bit more. And you keep tightening it until you start to hear like crackling. The problem with using a knife is you can cut into the wire because this does not have a protective sheath on it. So if you use the pipe cutter and you gently use your knife, you can cut through it or you can use one of these, which it's a little bit riskier because you could end up damaging the line. But if it's on the end like that and you know, you're know you only risking two inches, I definitely think it's worth, worth it. You can get it right up to the end there and as you twist it, you hear it. It's cutting through the fibers So you can spend hours trying to get this outer protective layer off. And I do mean literally hours. This stuff is on there really tight and it's packed in there very tight. One trick that I've found, if you look in here, these plastic pieces, so you can see I, I cut through it just a little bit and on the inside there's more fiber, there's more strings. This, is, this plastic piece acts as a strength member if you pull this out through the middle, there's another one on the other side. You pull those all the way out, and this slides right off. And this is the easiest thing that I have found in order to get those off. The inside of this is exactly the same as the inside of the other OTS. You've got an aluminum protective layer, and if you find any corrosion or any powder in here, then you know that the corrosion has traveled up the line. 
colors are a little bit different because you have red and white and red and black. So you have two reds, but they're in two separate pouches. So I identify this as white and red white. And then on this side, you've got black and red black. Use the same thing, use your multimeter and touch each one of these to the other end to make sure that you have the correct wires going to the correct place. After the epoxy cures, we'll talk about some more maintenance tips. Okay, so a few tips to maintain your high use plugs. A lot of the times if these wires are in the water, especially if the comm box or comm unit is on, there is current that is flowing through these. It will connect in the water and it will, through process of uh, electrolysis, it will start to pit and remove the outside coverings. This is even worse in salt water. On the inside, you can also get corrosion for water or salt water sitting inside the female ends. The best thing you can do is use CLR or calcium lime and rust remover. You put some of that on the inside, just a few drops, and you'll see it start to like fizz uh, and uh, it, it'll change colors on the inside. Let it sit for about five minutes. That will have removed all of the rust, calcium, and lime off of the, the surface there. These two pins, you can put it in a little tiny cup. Well, what's left of the cup? Put a little bit in there and let it sit. You have to make sure you put it, put the CLR into the female ends. It will not, setting it in there, there will be a bubble, a pocket on the inside that will not get cleaned. After you've cleaned off the ends with the calcium lime and rust remover, you can take something like a, I have a stainless steel brush here or a, an abrasive stick, something like that. Something that's not going to damage it, but that can clean it off and polish it. So you can polish it up. I would then use water. So you can dip this end in water and then flush the other ends with a small little bottle or squirt bottle of, of water to get all of that cleaner out. Then put some alcohol drops in there so that it removes any of the leftover moisture so it's not sitting in there. And then uh, put some dielectric grease on the pins. Uh, the thing that I usually do is I put the pins just on the edge of the, the bottle and I squeeze it and just kind of spin it around. That way it coats the outside of the pins. If you do that on both sides of the connections and plug them together, you'll get dielectric grease all around on, on both sides on the inside as well. And because of how tight the tolerances are on the inside, the contact will move any of that dielectric grease out of the way. Don't disconnect underwater. My team tends to, or has had a, a bad habit of once the dive is over with, unclipping and disconnecting the comm lines underwater. And that definitely corrodes it quicker because you're introducing salt water into it. If you can, plug them in dry when you're on the surface and unplug them when you're dry on the surface. If you can use a dummy plug, please do. If you don't want to purchase the OTS dummy plugs, you can cut the end off of an old high use plug and then clean it up, make sure it's polished and clean, there's no rust or corrosion or anything. Load it up with some dielectric grease like we just talked about and then use that to store on the other end because even being in the environment, you have salt in the air and that salt will still corrode the ends of the lines. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the video and please let me know what content you'd like to see in the future. I know this is targeting an extremely narrow group of people, but I want to make videos that are informative and helpful. Please check out some of my new content and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks again, and I'll see you around. Bye.